We're back. <laughs> Sorry. Debatable if that's a good thing or not. <laughs> yep. Objectively, we are back. That's all we can say. I mean, we could apologize. Yeah, I was going to say an apology might be. Reparations or perhaps an order. I don't know. <laughs> I think it goes the inverse way. Everybody owes us some beers for... <laughs> Right. Logging in at 9 a.m. Recording. Yeah, no, I mean, I, honestly, this is the least offensive thing I have to deal with any given day. And yet, well, that's I, the I, nicest every, thing you've said in a long time. No, it is. No, it is. Like, I, I, I can't say that I don't enjoy doing this, but it's still, you know, one of those requirements. And it's like, like I hate, I hate having stuff on the schedule, you know? Yeah. I don't know. Here we are. Good morning. <laughs> Morning. <laughs> Anyways, there's this mega court case going on that continues to go on. Um, there's yeah. some interesting stuff popped out yesterday. A lot of it, because it's court and some of it's slanted with opinions and whatever, at least from the Epic and Tim Sweeney side, he, I think it was dating back to 2018, he was really pressuring Phil slash Xbox to make the effectively Fortnite and other free to play games free on Xbox. And actually Phil was like, yeah, this is probably something we should do. Um, and you can see how long it actually took for that to materialize, but it's um, amazing to me how long things like that take, yeah. you know, there's all this. Um, so uh, people might be wondering, given how vocal I've been about, uh, this case and other antitrust cases like this, uh, that I have not written about this topic yet. Right. Cause the trial's ongoing. It mm -hmm. just started at the beginning of the week. Um, aside from little tidbits, like the thing that you just said, honestly, there isn't a lot of new information. It's just, you know, and I see these headlines like, um, you know, Epic CEO, uh, Tim Sweeney admits, um, that the 30%, uh, fee that you get on consoles is similar to that charged on mobile. That's a headline. Mm -hmm. Um, that is a fact. Actually, the headline said similar to, not the same as. It's the same. It, those, it's the same fee structure. Um, him admitting to that. That's like, Brad, here's a fact. Could you admit that it's true? Brad, hmm. this is a fact. Just admit it. Admit it, Brad. Admit it. That's not a headline. That's not news. It's He doesn't have to admit right. to a fact. You know. So there's a lot of that kind of stuff. Um it is also an asterisk on the end of that headline because I would argue, and I think I'm sure Epic is going to argue that that doesn't matter, <laughs> you mm. know, but whatever. Anyway, the different markets, um, with, you know, and there's also other different things going on, but more important, maybe you go after the big fish first and yeah. uh, that's what they're doing. So Apple's approach is somewhat interesting too. just one example of them justifying it. Uh, when mm -hmm. Tim Sweeney was on the stand, they asked him and said, Hey, do you use our metal API? which is Apple's effectively graphics built on top of Lair for Fortnite. Mm -hmm. And he said, yes. Mm -hmm. And he said, well, who should pay for the development of that API? And that's that's part of their... Uh, Apple, sh Apple should. Yeah. That's, that's a simple question. Apple should. Apple did. You know, uh, the thing I would say just, and this is objectively, you know, uh, there were like rumors about the the margins that happen on the App Store. Mm -hmm. um, you got to understand, everything that Apple does is uh, paid for by the iPhone. Everything. So the margins on the App Store, whether they're 30% or 78% or whatever the number, crazy number was, you know, the the App Store is not a cost center. Mm -hmm. it, it's all it does is generate money. It's like a it's like a Vegas machine that cannot ever not hit. It's just sitting there cranking out money. And so yeah, a, a, Apple invests all kinds of money in their platforms. Uh, Metal is just one tiny example. Um, they do that to attract developers to their platform. They do that to attract users to their platform. They have succeeded wildly at that. So the answer to that question is Apple should pay for that. You don't charge developers for stuff like that. What are you talking about? You're, you're offering developers an advantage or a benefit to coming to your platform. That's a little tiny piece of the puzzle. For game makers, maybe it's a big piece of the puzzle. But, um, you know, whatever, you know. I, I Look, if Metal didn't exist, mm -hmm. Fortnite would still exist on iOS. Maybe it wouldn't be as good as Android. And who would that disadvantage? Would it disadvantage Epic? No, it would disadvantage Apple. It behooves Apple to create something like Metal to draw developers and users to its platforms. One of the other arguments that Epic made um, with, I think it was to Phil, 
I can't remember who to Tim was emailing. I think it was Phil was that by bringing Fortnite, because this was prior to Fortnite being on iOS and Android, was that mm-hmm. it was actually going to help sell more Xbox consoles. It, okay. <laughs> yeah, int- I don't, I don't know if I necessarily agree with that, but um, that was, that was part of it. Yeah. Well, look, I, I, I don't know what the costs are for a company like Microsoft to maintain the Mi- Microsoft Store, we'll call it, mm-hmm. right, which exists across Xbox Windows. Um, but I think anyone would agree without knowing anything about the math or the numbers or whatever, that it's a much bigger cost for Microsoft than it is for Apple. And by, and I mean, literal end of the day cost after you factor out the cost of doing uh, business and and the revenues, the end, the net result at the end for Microsoft is probably a loss or a very small uh, advantage. Mm -hmm. I'm sure the margins in the video game business are razor thin. And um, for Microsoft, this has not been a, profitable business at all so you know when you kind of say well 30 percent, 30 percent, what's the difference i mean the difference is uh, the app store made 16 billion dollars last quarter if i remember correctly something like that um and uh, uh the microsoft store did not <laughs> so you know okay i, I you know it, again i yeah the the fear is literally the same but the hmm. the conditions are different well, yeah, yeah, iPhones aren't subsidized either. I mean, if an Xbox console cost a thousand dollars, where Microsoft was making two hundred oh, bucks yeah, yeah, yeah. on right, the hardware, right. that, that's a great point. Yeah, if if Microsoft, you know, if somehow consoles could sell as much as smartphones, which they can't, um, and have the same margins, yeah, yeah, the Xbox One, you know, One X would have to cost a thousand, maybe fifteen hundred bucks somewhere in there, you know, and uh, and then. You know, we're just making up a fantasy world. It doesn't mm-hmm. like this world doesn't exist. Like this is silly. The only thing that costs a thousand to fifteen hundred bucks is an iPhone, even though it costs Apple about four hundred and thirty-seven dollars to make that iPhone. So, you know, they make incredible margins on all of their products and services, all of them. Um, it's hard to feel bad for this company. It's hard to feel like it's getting squeezed. It's partners, it's developers want a free ride. You know, yeah. I mean, you as the creator of this platform should give your developers a free ride. Isn't that the point? I. I don't, I'm sorry. I just, this topic makes me crazy. I, yeah, I don't know. Well, we'll get to talk about it more tomorrow. Google's next, by the way. Google's <laughs> yeah. just, just bad. Let's not forget. There's right. another uh, Microsoft executive who's going on the stand this morning. It was supposed to happen yesterday. So mm-hmm. I'm making an assumption we'll probably hear more, or at least see more internal emails. Who is from, this one? Um, I can't remember who it is. I believe it's a woman, but I cannot and remember. Is it Xbox related or just Yeah, it's, I'm pretty Apple. sure it's Xbox. Xbox. Uh, really, okay. I cannot remember the individual's name. I want to say Sarah Bond, but I'm not sure if that's it. Mm. So she's at ha- she's heads up. Uh, I think like relationships with these uh, like third parties. Yeah. 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 So not sure if it's her, but it's it is a whatever. Somebody from Xbox is on the stand. Microsoft, look, I, it's still a, a reasonable chance. I, th- I still think it's going to happen. Like they're probably going to drop the fee structure on Xbox to eighteen percent, seventy two percent, whatever the figure is. From thirty seventy, um, I don't know if they will. I think they will. Um, I think I, I think there's been a misunderstanding because that kind of document that came out. It's mm-hmm. like, well, look, they, they said they were going to do it, and they're not going to do it. You just explained how long it took Phil Spencer to get rid of uh, Xbox Live Gold on free to play games. Um, but if you actually read the document, what you'll see is that they plan to do the um, Microsoft Store on Windows in the first half of the year, and they just did it. And they plan to do the uh, Xbox Store in the second half of the year, which has not yet happened. Mm. So um, that may not, in fact, be out of date. That could literally yeah, be the I mean, plan. Like the... Well, I, the, the Verge asked them, "Are you doing this?" And they said, "We don't have plans to change the free structure at this time." Yeah, so that's a cop out. Well, I'm just well, I I'm just saying, I I, I think it is going to happen. In yeah. fact, I, if Microsoft was smart about it, they would announce it right now. And say, you know, we've been, you know, it's the whole we should do as we preach kind of deal. And we've been looking at how the things are going and we're, we agree this is not a proper price structure. So there was other speculation that Microsoft might tie that into Game Pass, that they might go to that fee structure and says, yes, we will take 12% of sales if your game is in Game Pass. That would be smart. That w- I think that's the ne- that's what I think might happen. They keep the 30% if you're not in Game Pass. If you are, then you yeah. move to 12 and then whatever. I will say this just to kind of speak to the nuances of this case. Um, I don't, 
I don't have a particular opinion about uh, third parties being able to put app stores on iOS, right? Like mm -hmm. I, um, other than the fact that if there's only going to be one actual app store, the fee structure is obviously just way too high. It's like three times what it should be. It's crazy. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. And they shouldn't be able to force developers to go through their own payment systems. And they shouldn't be able to force developers not to communicate mm -hmm. to their own customers. All that stuff is crazy. But, but like multiple app stores, I, you know, I'm not so sure about that. Now, that said, if you consider like an in-game thing where you can buy tokens to get armor in a game or whatever the heck it is, um, is does that constitute an app store? Yeah, okay. But I feel like in-app purchases, it's just in-app purchases, right? It's not yeah. an app store. You have some set of offerings. Um, I don't know. I, those The price on that is just too high. Uh, and I, this is where the gatekeeper role comes in. I mean, I think this is, you know, central to it. I mm -hmm. don't think you should be able to download an app store as an icon on your iPhone and use that instead of the app store that Apple provides. Like, I, I actually don't, I don't see a need for that. Um, but that is, you know, based on the notion that the current app store situation is going to be fixed. Yeah, I don't know. I, I... I think, I don't know. I, I really don't know. Cause I, I see, absolutely see your point. But then part of me is like, you know what? Maybe, maybe the, it comes down to Apple can keep doing yeah. exactly whatever it is they want, but they have to allow Epic to have it, its own game store. Yeah. Right. Well, right. And I don't think that app store will go anywhere fast. I don't, I don't think, think there's it. any, you know, I, Epic should be allowed to sell things within their apps. Right. Yeah. This is actually very similar to the browser thing. You know, when Microsoft had the antitrust case in the United States and, I, and yeah, no, I, the, be, not the browser ballot stuff from Europe, but the stuff that happened in the United States. The idea was that Microsoft had to put other icons on their desktops and had to allow PC makers to put other web browsers in their computers. Mm -hmm. um, and actually, I'm, I'm mixing things up a little bit because Microsoft was forced to advertise other online services. Remember, it was like in this yeah. is Windows 95, um, America Online, a Genie, probably uh, mm -hmm. CompuServe, whatever it was around at the time. Um, in the EU, with Microsoft and browsers, they did the browser ballot thing. Now that's actually very interesting because Internet Explorer remains in Windows, but you could, at, uh, I guess, install time, the first initial setup time, mm -hmm. choose a different browser, right? And and I'm not asking for this. <laughs> like, I don't want, I don't think it makes sense to force Apple to provide a screen when you first turn on an iPhone that says, hey. Do you want to use the Epic Game Store as your default app store or whatever, you know, whatever it is? And it's like, no, 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 guys, come on. That's uh, that's a level of oversight that should not have to happen. It's just that Apple's app store right now has so many other problems that need to be fixed with regards to, like, payment systems. It's another thing. Everyone confuses payment systems, you know? They think it's going to be on them to <laughs> remember, like, have to re-enter credit card yeah. information or something. This is This happens on the back end, guys. This is this is not going to impact users. It, it, it will ultimately end up lowering prices um, because the, there will be co competition among these payment services, and um, lower prices. Well, that's what happens. Scott. It's just not. It's well, that's, yeah. That is that's how it works. We will anyway. see. Yeah, we'll see. Well, it's it's a big thing. It's a big. It is a big, big thing issue. because it's going to impact Google as well. Uh, oh yeah, I it's would imagine impact, whatever. It's going to impact the video game guys. I yep. mean, this is going to be. It's, it rolls downhill, you know, yeah. like it's going to hit all these things. Um, Microsoft, I think, was smart to proactively change Windows. But, when you know, in the scope of things, the Windows at Microsoft Store doesn't matter at all. Um, but setting an example is always setting a precedent, frankly, is smart. Um, yeah, but it, iOS and Google Play are the two. They're the big fish, you know. Mm -hmm. But when that's done, yeah, let's go after everything else. Why not? Yeah. Why not? Speaking of everything else, I, I, I don't know what's causing this, but every time I open Edge, I get restore pages. Microsoft Edge unexpectedly closed. Restore. Every PC, every time. So I don't know what's triggering this. Some version of Edge. Um, there, there was an upgrade to Microsoft Word, and this is probably in the, um, I'm in the, like the Office Insider, beta, mm -hmm. whatever this. called. And I'm, <laughs> you got to remember, I first witnessed this on this computer here, which is a workstation with like 32 gigs of RAM and... Mm -hmm stupid amount of storage and a crazy graphics card and what happens is if you you start typing in word and you hit you know control s to save it will take the first line as the headline yep for the most part and 
pop it yeah. up with the dialog auto populate it. That comes right up. And usually that's what I want because I have the title at the top and that is going to mm -hmm. be the name of the article. So I hit enter. And then that thing sits there for like five or six seconds it, it, before it goes any, like the application freezes. It, you can't touch it. You can't do anything. You think it didn't work, you know, until you get used to it. And you're like, oh my God. And I'm thinking, so, and eventually it saves. And it's fine. After that, it's fine. Like the saves mm -hmm. after that, it'll work fine. It's something to do with that dialogue and reaching into the file. So I have no idea what's going on, but it's a huge problem. And I'm like, wow. I'm like, this is happening on this honking workstation thing. This is weird. But since then, of course, I've been using whatever laptops I'm reviewing or using and it happens everywhere. And I'm, I'm you know, same thing. It's like some random build broke something, you know? So you're probably, I assume you're unstable when it comes to Microsoft Edge. Yeah. Yep. So presumably, you've seen this, right? Like, you know, there are version upgrades that happen. Like you go to version mm -hmm. 91 or 92 or whatever next. But between now and then, you can, you'll actually get upgrades in Edge. It will tell you to like reboot it. And it just, it's the same version. It's just the minor version of yep. their own, right? So they do that kind of upgrade. I, I bet they'll, I bet you'll see one of those in the next few days. We can only hope. We can only hope. We can only hope that we'll be back tomorrow. Yeah. Gonna launch an app store called Paul's Palace. Paul's Palace. We sell gems. <laughs>